your kidneys can lose 90% of their function before you feel a thing. That's not a typo. 90%. Right now, 37 million Americans have kidney disease, and 90% don't know that they have it. Welcome back to our Kidney Health Series, everyone. This is part three of six. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board-certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. And today, we're going to uncover the nine silent symptoms that could save your kidney function, if you know what to look for. So here's the reality. Most kidney disease symptoms don't appear until stage 3B4. And by then, you have lost more than half of your kidney function. But your body is always constantly sending signals, but they're whispers, not shouts. And today, I'm going to teach you how to hear those whispers. So here's our detection roadmap. We're going to take a look at why kidney disease hides until advanced stages, what the research reveals about symptom timing, the nine warning signs ranked by frequency and stage, how declining kidney function affects your brain, your heart, your bones, and your blood chemistry. And then finally, your early detection strategy with specific questions to discuss with your doctor. All right, let's start with why the symptoms hide. So chronic kidney disease is a master of disguise. The symptom timeline reality is important to understand. When we talk about stages, and this was discussed in part one, so make sure you check that out, but stages one to two are almost always completely silent. Stage 3A usually has no symptoms. EGFR, that's the kidney filtration rate, sits at 45 to 59. But at stage 3B, where the EGFR drops to about 30 to 44, that's where symptoms start to appear. And in some cases, they don't appear till stage 4 or 5, but usually at stages 4 and 5, multiple symptoms become common. And this is typically when the GFR, or we call estimated or EGFR is below 30. Now, according to the latest KDGO guidelines, both decreased kidney function and protein spillage are usually silent. They're not apparent without laboratory testing. And this explains why 90% of the people with kidney disease don't know they have it. Your kidneys are incredibly tough. They keep filtering blood and maintaining vital functions even when significantly damaged. Think of it like a car that keeps running smoothly even after losing three of its four cylinders. Why this silent progression is dangerous? Since early symptoms don't show up, it's easy to assume everything's fine when it's not. Meanwhile, irreversible damage accumulates silently. Think of termites in your house. You don't see the damage happening, but they're systematically weakening the structure. And when you finally notice those sagging floors, the damage is extensive. Some people do experience subtle changes earlier, but they're so mild that they're easily dismissed. For example, silent fatigue gets blamed on stress. Mild swelling could be attributed to too much salt. Foamy urine is ignored as probably nothing. This is why knowing your numbers is so critical. EGFR and urine albumin creatinine ratio testing can detect kidney problems 5 to 10 years before symptoms ever achieve or ever appear. This gives you precious time to intervene, especially at a time when treatments are most effective. The silent nature of this disease also means something else. When people are finally diagnosed at advanced stages, it's a complete shock. Understanding this progression explains why proactive screening is essential, especially if you have diabetes, high blood pressure, or other risk factors like obesity. When symptoms do appear, they follow a predictable pattern. Let me break down the nine most common symptoms into two groups. First, the symptoms you feel inside your body. So, symptom number one, fatigue and weakness. The stats. Fatigue and weakness, it ends up affecting about 70% of kidney disease patients. Most prevalent symptom across all stages and often the first symptom people notice. Now, this isn't your typical tiredness. It's profound, unshakable fatigue. Rest doesn't resolve it. Now, why kidneys cause fatigue? Well, when kidney function declines, erythropoietin production drops. Think of erythropoietin as your body's 
make more blood cells signal. It tells your bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. Fewer red blood cells means less oxygen delivery. Result? Persistent exhaustion. Additionally, uremic toxins build up. These are waste products that pile up in your blood when kidneys can't filter them out. Kind of like trash clogging a drain. Symptom number two, brain fog and cognitive issues. The hidden mental symptoms, difficulty concentrating, memory problems, especially short term, mental cloudiness or sluggishness. Sometimes this is called uremic encephalopathy. That's just brain fog from toxins building up over time. And this occurs because those same uremic toxins that affect the body are affecting brain function. So this makes clear thinking and concentration much, much harder. Symptom number three is severe itching. This affects about 42% of patients with moderate to severe kidney disease. And this is particularly common in stages four and five. Once again, this isn't ordinary itching. It's often severe, stubborn, total body itching. It affects large body areas and it doesn't respond well to your typical treatments. Oftentimes, it's related to phosphorus buildup and other toxins damaged kidneys can't filter properly. Symptom number four is muscle cramps and restless, restless legs. Now, this affects 14 to 17 percent of patients with stage three through five kidney disease. And this results oftentimes from electrolyte imbalances. So electrolytes, remember, those are minerals in your blood like calcium, phosphorus, also other things like potassium. As kidney function declines, this delicate mineral balance gets disrupted. And this can cause painful muscle cramps, especially at night. And it can result in restless leg syndrome. Symptom number five is shortness of breath. This affects 14 to 17% of patients with stage four through five. And the two main causes in kidney disease, one is fluid overload. So extra fluid, it can accumulate in your lungs when kidneys can't remove it adequately. And this makes breathing difficult. And number two of this is severe anemia. When fewer red blood cells carry oxygen, your body starts to struggle. And this leads to shorter breath with exertion. Symptom number six is nausea, vomiting, and loss of appetite. And this is more common in advanced stages. This results from uremic toxin buildup, and it can include oftentimes a metallic type taste in your mouth. As waste products accumulate, they significantly affect your digestive system. Now, foods may taste different. You may feel persistently nauseous, or you may lose interest in eating altogether. Now, let's go into the second piece of this which is the warning symptoms and signs you see. So let's look at those symptoms that you can actually see or observe. So symptom number seven is swelling in the legs, ankles, and feet. Now this is more common in stages four through five, and it results from sodium and water retention. And this is often first noticed in the lower extremity simply due to gravity. So as you're walking around, you'll see because of gravity, fluid will accumulate in your ankles. And when kidneys can't remove excess fluid and sodium effectively, fluid starts to accumulate in tissues. So you might notice that your shoes feel tight. Socks are leaving deep indentations and ankles are looking puffy by evening. Symptom number eight is foamy or bubbly urine. What to look for? Persistent foam that doesn't disappear quickly. It's similar to beer foam or beaten egg whites and it indicates protein spillage. We call this albuminuria, and that just means protein in the urine. Remember, albuminuria refers to albumin, which is one type of protein. Proteinuria is the term that encompasses all types of protein. So healthy kidneys, they do keep protein in your bloodstream where it belongs. And when kidney filters become damaged and leaky, protein escapes into the urine, and that creates that telltale foam. And this can occur at any stage where protein spillage is present. And finally, symptom number nine is changes in urination pattern. So what to watch for? They can be nocturia or frequent nighttime urination. This could be because of changes in urine volume. Blood in the urine, which is less common, can also occur. As kidney function declines, kidneys can lose their ability to concentrate urine effectively. 
meaning you might feel like you're having to go to the bathroom more often and having frequent urination, especially disruptive nighttime bathroom trips. Here's the key with all of these symptoms. One-off fatigue isn't a red flag, but if it's constant, that's when to pay attention. Occasional swelling isn't necessarily concerning, but persistent patterns warrant medical evaluation. Now, if you've experienced any of these symptoms persistently, drop it in the comments. And more importantly, make sure you check your with your doctor to understand if there's something serious that needs to be worked up. All right, let's go into the next part, the hidden connections. So beyond filtering waste, your kidneys are master chemists. They maintain this delicate mineral balance called electrolytes. And when this balance gets disrupted, it creates a cascade of problems. And this explains many kidney disease symptoms. So let's start with potassium, the dangerous buildup. So what are some statistics? 8.8% of stage 3 patients have high potassium. 34.4% of stage 5 patients have dangerous levels. Hyperkalemia is a fancy way of saying too much potassium in your blood. The reason it's so critical is because high potassium can mess with your muscles and your heart. And it's particularly dangerous because it can cause muscle weakness and fatigue. It can cause heart rhythm problems, and in severe cases, it can cause cardiac arrest or a heart attack. And this explains why kidney disease patients often experience muscle weakness and why careful dietary monitoring is so essential. But here's what really surprises most patients, the phosphorus and calcium bone connection. So have you ever wondered why kidney disease affects your bones? When kidneys can't filter, excess phosphorus and can't activate vitamin D properly, your calcium and phosphorus balance gets severely disrupted. And what this leads to is bone pain and weakness, severe itching, muscle cramps, calcium deposits in blood vessels, and those deposits increase heart attack risk. And then of course there's sodium, which is the swelling culprit. Damaged kidneys will lose their ability to excrete excess sodium and this will lead to fluid retention, visible swelling, worsening high blood pressure, and strain on the heart. So you can see how this interconnected web of electrolyte imbalances explains something important. Kidney disease affects virtually every organ system. It's not just about waste removal. It's about maintaining the precise chemical environment your body needs to function. So let's get into the next part, which is your detection strategy. So let's focus on practical strategies that you should know about. And these strategies could very well save your kidney function. So here's a three question home assessment. Ask yourself these questions monthly. Question number one, am I experiencing persistent fatigue that doesn't improve with rest? This matters because fatigue once again affects 70% of kidney patients and is often the earliest noticeable symptom. Question number two, have I noticed consistent swelling in my legs, ankles, or hands, especially by evening? And this indicates your kidneys may not be removing excess fluid effectively. Finally, question number three, has my urine been consistently foamy or bubbly for more than a week? This indicates protein spillage, a sign of kidney filter damage. Now, if you answer yes to any of these, especially if you have diabetes, high blood pressure, or other risk factors like obesity, schedule an appointment with your doctor and have your blood test and urine test checked. Essential questions for your doctor. So, when it comes to your kidney function, the questions you want to ask your doctor is, one, what is my current EGFR level? And what does this mean for my kidney? Number two, do I have protein in my urine? What is my urine albumin creatinine ratio number? Number three, based on my risk factors, how often should I have my kidney function tested? And then about symptom monitoring, number one, what symptoms should I watch for that might indicate my kidney disease is progressing? Number two, at what point should I be concerned about fatigue? swelling, or other symptoms. And then in terms of treatment timing, number one, if I have kidney disease, what stage am I? And what does that mean for management? Number two, 
at what point should I see a nephrologist or kidney specialist? Number three, and my favorite, what lifestyle changes would be the most beneficial for protecting my kidneys? So the proactive screening schedule in terms of high-risk individuals, so in other words, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, obesity, or family history, you want to make sure that you're getting your GFR and your albumin creatinine ratio at least once a year minimum. That's not maximum. That is the bare minimum. And it's more frequent testing if there's any abnormal results or symptoms develop. Regular electrolyte monitoring, if kidney disease is confirmed, is critical. And then for those who have confirmed kidney disease, every three to six months, you want to get your EGFR and your urine albumin creatinine ratio checked. And you want to have regular assessment of your blood pressure, especially checking it at home. Make sure that you're getting your electrolytes, sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate, BUN, creatinine, and anemia mark. What's your hemoglobin? What's your hematocrit? What's your iron stores? Like? And you want to do symptom tracking using validated tools. And there are lots of them. You can go on kidney.org. That's the National Kidney Foundation website for all sorts of wonderful tools. And very soon, you're going to have all of the same tools on cellprincipal.org as well. Then there's practical application. So what's really to summarize and take home from here? So number one, this week, look, complete this nine symptom self-assessment that we went over in this video. Request your EGFR and your albumin creatinine ratio test if you haven't had recent testing and make the first of each month your kidney check-in day and seek immediate medical attention for severe shortness of breath, significant decrease in urination, severe muscle weakness, persistent vomit. So today's key takeaways are as follows. Kidney disease stays silent until you have lost more than half the function. Fatigue affects about 70% of kidney patients is often the first warning sign. Electrolyte imbalances can explain why kidney disease affects your entire body, but catching kidney disease early is just the beginning. In part four, we're going to talk about the kidney protection protocol. And we're going to talk about evidence-based interventions that can slow progression by 30 to 50%. And we'll also mention the surprising foods that can protect versus other foods that can harm your kidneys. So if you found this video valuable, please thumbs up and share this with someone that you think might be in need of this kind of information. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can hear about part four that's coming out in just a couple of days. And here's a question before I end. If you've experienced brain fog or itching and never linked it to its kidneys, share your experience. How did you find out it was kidney disease? I would love to hear your experience and how you're dealing with it. And as always, I want to thank you so much for supporting me in this journey, supporting the channel. I always end my videos with this way, which is, Kindness and gratitude is the greatest thing in the world. Express kindness to others and express kindness to yourself by taking care of yourself. And I'll see everyone in part four where I'll show you exactly how to fight back against kidney disease. Thank you, everyone.